finally to Europe, to England, and a story from the world of art. A painting in the style of the long-dead great English artist Constable. Of course, it's not a constable, it's an imitation. And the painter responsible is one of the most outrageous master fakers alive today, Tom Keating, who recently rocked the British art establishment by confessing to up to 3,000 fakes over the last 25 years. Curators in galleries all over the country rush to their most valuable works with magnifying glasses to check that their Renoirs and Gainsboroughs weren't really from the brush of Tom Keating. Dealers and auctioneers were kept busy defending transactions they'd made as hundreds of their customers queried the authenticity of their purchases. But Mr Keating assured the police that he'd committed no illegal act and that his trickery had been no more than elaborate leg pulling. He promised in future to go straight and now, as the publicity dies down, he's establishing himself as an artist in his own right. At his studio in Suffolk, where Constable himself found the inspiration for his lyrical landscapes, Tom Keating's trying to put a quarter of a century of copying behind him. And financed by advances on a book he's writing on his colorful career, he's working at last to perfect a painting style of his own. But having relied on other artists for so long, can he come up with original ideas? No, um, the technique is the difficult thing. And I've evolved a technique of my own, which has never been done before. And, uh, you know, it's a form of classic painting, but um, with a difference. What sort of technique will you be using? Um, it's uh, known as the Venetian technique, you know, uh, temper underpainting and oil glaze finishes. But. Um, I use a syringe instead of a brush for much of it. This gives precision, and in what we call impasto, is it? And this, uh, after the whole thing's finished, you glaze it, you know, tonally, so on. You know, just try painting again, that's all. Do you want to become an artist who's acknowledged in your own right? Well, of course, every artist wants that. Isn't it? Are you hoping to become rich out of your future work, your own work? No not the object of the operation. I'd like to give money to my kids and so on, but uh, I don't like rich, rich as much. So what is the object of the operation? The object of the operation is to do what I was put on the earth to do, to be a painter. Faking's not confined to paintings. These objects at the famous London sale room of Sotheby's are part of a museum of glass and porcelain fakes, assembled over 50 odd years by Mr James Goodell. Some of them are subtle enough to have fooled him in the past. Uh, yes, well, now, that, that squirrel uh, was one of my mistakes long years ago. In, in 1945, uh, 46, I catalogued that as bow, and uh, unbelievably, it's a beautiful model. It's, the original was a Meissen one. Bow copied Meissen, but this was taken off a Meissen original, and uh, it's beautifully marked to the end of its tail with a bow mark. And then there's the bow, bow thing done by uh, some very celebrated uh, copyists at uh, Torquay. For instance, there's another of this man's work. Chelsea, little Chelsea's small rabbit, little beauty. See? Absolutely. And you could sell that today, I think, it'll pass in many places too. <laughs> At, uh, it's a very good example, again taken from the mice in the original, the loss in, in the firing and everything else, the colour. But if you look and examine it closely, there are various points when you're used to this, the real stuff. At once tell you, aha, clever but not clever enough, you know, it's just uh, uh, like that. While some pieces take on fake identities through the addition of spurious markings, Others have to lose some giveaway detail if they're to fool the experts. But the operation isn't always successful. First, if we may, uh, this uh, stoneware jug, which should be rare in about 1580, and uh, perhaps made by a man called Ian e Emans, but it, it's the silver gilt mounts, when you think they've gone to the trouble of making really nice silver gilt mounts in copy of the period, do and uh, beautifully modelled, 
And I must say, I've been taken in by these more than once in the early days. This particular one was given to me by a friend of mine who saw that I had got a blind spot, I suppose, for uh, dealing with these. And when he gave it to me, he, uh, he pointed out the maker and all the rest of it on the bottom. And he said, if you look, that these marks are nearly always rubbed off. And you can see where the boy in the shop was told to rub off the mark. There he's been. He's been very careless while he's been talking to his pal. And here is the actual mark very nicely left here. And uh, it's uh, uh, the, the initials. It was made about 1885 by Hans Schiffer. And uh, just about 300 years too late. Not a fake or a forgery, this painting's a reproduction, but crafted to a standard high enough to give even experts second thoughts. 32 of them were recently displayed at London's 61 gallery. They're being sold as Vala Chrome Masters, each one reproduced just 19 times, costing from £400 to £1,500 and taking six weeks to make. Reflected back, it's it's very good, but it just hasn't got this ultimate quality of translucence. Though under a magnifying glass, the brush marks may appear a little too prominent, the Valachromes claim to be the next best thing to having an original on the wall. The process starts with a 10 by 8 transparency of a painting acquired from a gallery. Then it's enlarged, processed and a print is made. Colour can be permanently fixed by a method which doesn't dye the paper but bleaches dye away. The Valachrome takes its name from Leo Vala, a London photographer. The photograph is moulded into the canvas in such a way that the image actually integrates itself with the material. The Valachromes are expected to find a ready market with embassies, banks, universities and those galleries unwilling to risk putting some old masters on show. It might mean we'll be seeing more reproductions in future and fewer of the originals, but no typical visitor would be able to detect the difference at any distance over a few feet. Since it's said that the sincerest form of flattery is imitation, perhaps the copiers, fakers and forgers aren't, after all, the parasites they're frequently thought to be.